Okay, so this video is basically going to be focused strictly on routing and how I ran all my brake lines. On the car, the brake lines are already completely installed. Uh, I, it was going to be way too hard to try to do this and uh, show you guys how it's done. So basically, I have it all installed. I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, there's not a lot of information on routing brake lines. There, there is, but not very uh, detailed or informative information. It's probably the thing that I struggle with the most so far on the car is figuring out what lines take. As most people use flex lines, some people use um, half hard lines, half flex lines like I am. Some people use all hard line. So there's a good combination of things that are going on here. So this video I'm going to focus, like I said, on doing it the way I did, which is a hard line from the brake master cylinder up to a flex line at the caliper. Um, I have the Flying Miata stainless steel braided flex lines from caliper to the mounting points on all four corners, as well as their new rear proportioning block. I also have a Wiltwood uh, proportioning block for uh, front to rear bias uh, that I'm installing. And I went ahead and instead of using, let me see if I have it around here, this uh, copper brake tubing that is given to you in the Eximotive kit. Uh, I found it was near impossible to get a good flare without buying a rather expensive pneumatic flare tool. So what I did instead is I went to Napa Auto Parts and purchased pre-formed or pre-flared, excuse me, brake lines. They come in many different sizes. I think it's uh, 8 inch, 12 inch, 20 inch, 30 inch, uh, I want to say 40 inch, 48 and 60 inch lengths. So there's quite a bit of versatility there. However, it's pretty much like kind of piecing a puzzle together as just because it's four feet away doesn't mean you need to use a four foot line because you have a lot of uh, bends and things you need to, to kind of um, uh, go around with the brake line. So because of that, I bought just over at Lowe's uh, in the plumbing section, a copper pipe uh, bending tool uh, for making, you know, uh, 45, 90 degree, whatever degree, uh, bends you want to. This makes uh, it look like a much more professional job when you're all done. I tried before bending them on a uh, like a beer bottle neck, uh, you know, the, the round part of my vice, things like that. And that did okay when I was in a pinch and need to get it to work, but that uh, bending tool really makes a nice look. So basically what I'm going to go over in this video is I'm going to show you the line from the master cylinder to the rear proportioning valve as well, or I guess it's not a proportion valve, I guess you would call that the, the T um, in the rear, but basically running that line as well as the line from the master cylinder to the front passenger brake and the line from the master cylinder to the front driver brake. As well as I'm going to show you some mounts that I welded into the frame for the front uh, area to mount the connection between the hard line and the braided stainless line. So let's get to it. Out of the engine bay here, you can see my line routing. This one here is for the uh, front driver's side brake line. This here is for the, goes along the frame wall there, back to here, and this is for the passenger side brake line. And then here's my Willwood proportioning valve. My lower line here is disconnected because I snapped the uh, adapter and I have to order another one from Flying Me out of there. And this basically rear line goes here and then all the way back underneath the tunnel into the rear of the car. So first off, we're going to start. I'm going to get in the car, show you the bends I made, show you the lengths I made, uh, starting with uh, this line here from the uh, rear of the car to the master cylinder or to the proportioning valve. Okay, so for the rear brakes, basically the side port here on the master cylinder is for your rear brake line. Now this is an eight inch line that is basically bent around and underneath and then up to the input on either your stock proportioning valve or your Willwood proportioning valve. Then on top, I have an eight inch line running here to a union. And then I have a, let me see here, a 40 inch line, I believe it is, from the union going down have a bend in here, across here, now getting over to the other side of the engine bay here, this bottom line here, then runs over to here, 
And I will be putting another P clip in here. I just can't show the edge. And then let me move the clutch line here. You can see how it goes down in the tunnel there and is bent along the frame rail. Switching underneath the car here. You can see that line coming down. And then another union there. And then I have a 48 inch line. Sorry, let me twist the camera here. Kind of a tight space under the car here. I have a 48 inch line basically going from front to rear of the tunnel. So here's another union. And this line carries all the way down across here. And this was a 48 inch line. Now, after this union at the rear of the car, scoot over here. <clears throat> They're basically, let me get the light over. You can see the bend around to the rear of the car. This was, I believe, an 18 or 20 inch line, whichever one they sell there. And then up here, let me try to see if I can hook this light on something. Uh, okay, now up here is the Flying Miata T. Instead of running this toward the, um, what would you call it, the cabin or the, you know, seating area of the car, it is pointing down. So you'll have to bend the stock fuel line, which is right here to allow it as it normally wants to come. I believe it is from underneath. You want it to come from the inside and rebend it. Then this allows this line here to go up into the proportioning valve. And here's your Flying Miata Flex line. And then I will be putting another P-clip um, basically right about in this area once I have the frame removed for powder coat. So that is the routing of the rear brake lines. So before we head up to the front of the car here, I just want to show you another uh, shot here of, at the rear T. Normally this block would not be pointing down, it would be pointing this way, but there's not enough clearance um, because of the interior panel that will go here. So basically bending this, your stock rear line to go to this and having the input from the master cylinder come from the bottom. And here you can see the flying Miata flex line. Uh, basically, that's the, the easiest way to go that I found on this. At the rear here, there's basically just the flex line and then this, the stock line that I just reused. You can make a new one of these if you want. Um, I just didn't have the need for it. So nothing to do there, no fabrication needed if you saved your rear brake line. Now, this is by far the easiest uh, and shortest line, the driver's side line. Basically, going from this port here on the top of the master cylinder, it is a 12 inch line bent and looped into this mount that I made here. And basically what I did on this side, I took uh, one of the stock mounts that I had cut off. I basically went through, let me see if I can get a video or a shot of it here. Bent it right here into an L and then tack welded it to the frame here and all along both sides on the bottom. This allows the flying Miata braided line here and where it unions with the hard line to have a nice mounting point. Um, on the driver's side I did the same thing but I actually fabricated my own out of just basically a piece of I think it was eighth inch thick um, one inch wide flat bar steel flat bar and made my own hole I drilled a 5 8 hole to allow the line to go through and then uh, just did about a two and a half inch long piece that I cut off and bent it into an L shape on my vise uh, and welded it up the same. So they're pretty easy to make yourself. That's just kind of a picture of what it looks like and where it's mounted. Um, if you can't figure out how to do it, you probably shouldn't be fabricating your own line there. Um, but it's pretty easy if you're decently handy with a welder and a grinder. Last part here is basically going to the um, passenger side brake caliper. Uh, basically the side port here on the master cylinder. This is a, oh, let me think here. This was a 40 inch line, as I recall, going, uh, sorry, I have it written down somewhere. Yeah, I believe it was a 40 inch line. Um, basically going here, a bend up, a bend here to match the, the other bend. 
then dropping down into a P-clip running along this frame rail here to another P-clip here and a bend down and then following up and a loop up and over here. Let me get some light there. Loop up and over here to the other mount that I fabricated to hold the brake line. So let's give you another quick video of that line. So you can kind of see how it routes. And I'll give you a video of the lines in the engine bay here. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, I had a heck of a time with it because like I said, I, I just couldn't find a lot of information on how the routing is done um, for these brake lines, but I think mine worked out pretty well and I think it turned out pretty good. So as always, subscribe if you like the video uh, or like the hit the like button on the video. I appreciate you guys uh, watching these. Hopefully uh, soon here I got more to come. Next one's going to be up on the uh, clutch line which is a pretty easy one, but there's kind of some funky stuff. As you can see here, I got this bolt hitting the frame rail at the clutch cylinder. Um, but a few things I'm going to show you guys there, how I did it and what to watch out for when you're doing it. Thanks for watching, guys.